I told my fiance I don't really want to marry her anymore. My 26 male, fiance Sarah, 24 female, and I are set to get married in three months. We were visiting a botanical garden yesterday when Sarah pointed out a flower called the Arabian Jasmine, a little white flower with a nice scent. She said that her cousin Stephanie had those at her wedding. I asked if it was the same Stephanie that would be in attendance with her husband at our wedding, and she said it was. Sarah and Stephanie are apparently pretty close, and she started telling me about Stephanie and her husband. At one point, she told me that Stephanie had actually cheated on her husband twice before they got married, and that the second time was a couple of months before the actual wedding. Her husband never found out. I asked her why she never told Stephanie's husband about what happened and she responded by saying it wasn't her circus and wasn't her monkeys. And that it's not a big of a deal anyway since they weren't married at the time. I've been thinking about what she said ever since. I consider cheating the ultimate worst betrayal in a relationship. Clearly my fiance doesn't think so since she said her cousin cheating wasn't that big of a deal since they weren't married. Would this mean that she thinks cheating on me right now wouldn't be that big of a deal since we aren't married yet? As a man, if I got cheated on by my partner, I hope someone who knew would tell me about it. I would heavily judge anyone who knew about it, didn't tell me, let me go on to marry the person that cheated on me, and attend my wedding as if nothing was wrong, like my fiancé did to her cousin's husband. About an hour ago, I texted my fiancé, I'm not sure if I can go forward with getting married, let's talk in person later tonight. She's been blowing up my phone with texts and missed calls ever since. I'm just going to tell her what I've said in this post when I see her. Today, my wife met my girlfriend. I, 32 male, am a widow. My wife passed away from pancreatic cancer five years ago. She was forced to leave behind our two kids, R, 10 male, and H, 7 male. My wife was the absolute light of my life. We were high school sweethearts, went to the same college, and got married after graduation. We were inseparable. Every day, I fell more in love with her. It was like my heart was living outside my body. When she passed, the amount of pain I was in was indescribable. I prayed to go to sleep and not wake up just so I could see her one last time. I contemplated meeting her, but every time I was ready, my kids would look at me. They had her face, her personality, her DNA. I couldn't leave them. They were all I had left of her. It took years before I was able to function normally again. I even quit my job and lived off of savings from her life insurance for about a year. I was half the dad I used to be and only a fraction of my former self. Two years after her passing, I decided enough was enough and I kicked myself into gear. I found a job in a different city, closer to my parents. I packed my kids up and I moved. Life was hard, but I kept chugging along and eventually I found some joy. A year after moving, I took a business trip to New York where I met my current girlfriend, Elle. While I acknowledged there was chemistry, I told her I was already married and she understood. However, a few months later, I had to go back to New York where we met up again. I let my guard down for the first time around her. Before I knew it, she was putting in a transfer from my home branch and moving to my city. I fell in love with her and asked her out a year ago next month. My kids adore her and though she reminded them she will never take their mom's place, they love calling her Mama L. Today was the anniversary of my wife's passing, an extremely hard day for all of us. This morning, I walked into the living room to find Elle and my kids waiting for me. The kids were dressed in their church clothes with goofy smiles on their faces and bouquets in hand. Apparently, Elle came up with the idea of a picnic at my wife's grave, an idea that the boys loved as they enjoyed going to see their mom. While I was sleeping, they prepared food and flowers, then insisted on wearing their best clothes. I'll admit that I cried at the sight of them. I don't know how I got this lucky twice in a row. I wanted my wife to meet this amazing woman, so I asked Elle to come along, and she did. The day that I dread every year turned out to be a humbling reminder of the reason why I stayed on this planet. To my lovely wife, you can never be replaced, but she is good to me and she takes care of our kids like you would. Thank you for sending her to me. Stop! I'm gonna cry! I gotta end the video! I'm gonna cry! I'm gonna cry! Am I the asshole for not wanting my daughter to wear heels to a wedding because she will look taller than me? My 44 male daughter, 16 female, has always been a nice girl that is a little shy and never causes any trouble. She is great at school and very talented in many activities. She has a group of like-minded, trustworthy friends, but has never been involved with boys or goes to parties late at night. My wife's niece is getting married and she asked my daughter to be one of her bridesmaids. I thought she was maybe a little too young for that, but ultimately I didn't protest. The issue is that as 
a part of her attire for the wedding, she is expected to wear high heel shoes. I'm only 5'6 tall and I have a deep trauma related to my height because of all the bullying that I suffered for years at the hands of my brothers with the approval of my now deceased father. I only started to get better after finishing college. It took me years of therapy and going no contact with almost all of my family to be able to mostly leave it all behind. They fully made me believe that no woman would ever like a man as short as me to the point I never had a romantic relationship until I met my wife at 25. But I'm not still fully in control of my emotions related to this issue. In particular, I've never been able to stop the phobia I have towards women that are taller than me. My wife is 5'4 tall and my daughter is currently 2 inches taller than her mother. That makes her almost exactly the same height as me. I never expected her to be so tall, but I have been able to remain mostly calm about it. I think knowing her since she was a baby and watching her grow myself helped my brain to humanize her and not seeing her now as I see other tall girls. Since she stopped growing a couple of years ago, I've been silently preventing my daughter to wear heels or any kind of shoes that make her appear taller than me. There has been no real problem with this because she has never had any serious interest in wearing those things until this wedding situation. I know that even just seeing her in front of me with heels being taller than me would be triggering to the point of making me cry, if not worse. All this will be especially terrible in a big family event like a wedding. Everyone will think that she is taller than me and I rationally know most people won't care, but I think I might really have a panic attack from the embarrassment that will be happening in my mind. I tried to convince her not to wear the heels, but this time she really wants to and is not interested in what I have to say. My wife thinks that if it is such a problem for me, I should just not go to the wedding, but I think that is unfair. I don't like feeling excluded and this would be practically as if they did exclude me because of height, which would feel especially painful for me. I've been talking to both of them about this, but it has proven useless. And now they have even started to act tired and angry anytime I bring up this subject. My daughter in particular says I'm making her feel bad and not allowing her to enjoy being a bridesmaid. Am I the asshole? I think the wife is right. I understand there's a deep, deep trauma because if it takes distancing from your family and this much therapy to get as far as you have, then I respect that there's been some serious trauma. Mm -hmm. But really, if I look at just this situation, I don't think there's a world where she doesn't go without heels. Am I the asshole for going no contact with my parents after learning they had lied to me about my allergies all my life? Hey everyone, I am 19 years old and my parents are in their 50s. For as long as I can remember, I have been allergic to several things. Dairy, wheat, flour, gluten, legumes. Since I was a young child, my parents have completely kept all of them out of our house. While other kids ate breakfast cereals, I ate fish and assorted pickled vegetables for breakfast. While other kids had Lunchables, I had grilled chicken or fish with, again, assorted vegetables, usually sweet potatoes. While other kids ate birthday cake at the birthday party, I had an apple. I never questioned this until a couple of months ago. I was at my aunt's house for my birthday party and she made brownies for everyone. For me, she took great steps to make them with almond flour and avoided all of my allergies. I started eating them and thought little of it until my aunt suddenly looked at me and, in a panicked way, asked which plate I took the brownies from. I pointed from the one where I got my brownies and she immediately stood up and told me we had to get my EpiPen. She raced to ask my mother for it and I sat there scared out of my mind because I had never mistakenly eaten flour before. I noticed my mother had calmed her down and then she said that we don't need to worry because she had switched the plates of brownies and after all I had eaten the ones made with almond flour. I found this incredibly odd because really why would she swap the plates? That doesn't even make sense but for the time being I let the issue rest. It didn't sit well with me for about a week and I finally went to get an allergy test. The doctor started with a skin prick test and lo and behold, I didn't react to any of the above substances. Then he ordered a blood test and when the results came in, they said that I had absolutely no intolerance to any of the foods I'm supposed to be allergic to. I was furious and called my mother. She eventually admitted that she lied to me because she wanted me to be on a paleolithic diet and wanted me to be able to avoid all temptations. She raised me with a lie about her own health, but she keeps insisting that I try to see it from her perspective. She spams my phone with messages about how healthy I am, that I never had acne, that I have been in great shape my whole life, that I have strong teeth and bones, and even that I got onto a D1 college tennis team. She has started calling me ungrateful for her intervention and insisting that I really should be glad I never got, quote, carb addicted. I don't know what to think. I carried around an EpiPen for all those years, one that I suspect maybe 
fake, seeing as my mother never got me to replace it, and I don't even know anymore. Am I the asshole and ungrateful for losing it over this? Well, this person just found out that they were lied to for their whole life. <sighs> Yeah. So no, not the asshole. Not at all. Um, and your feelings are your feelings and your feelings are valid. Let's, let's not gaslight anybody. 